Please get out your King James Bibles and turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 1. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Paul writes his epistle or letter to the church that's at Corinth. Corinth was a city in Greece. And this talks about suffering. They were suffering for the word of God. This is something, I bet you if what they were going through then was to happen to the church today, I bet you 85%, if not 90% of the people would deny Christ to keep from suffering. Actually, that's what the American church needs. The American church needs persecution. They really do. It would separate the sheep from the goats, and it would make people realize that their possessions were just stuff. And I've never seen a hearse or a casket with a trailer on the back of it to take all that stuff to where they're going. So let's take a look. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 1. <clears throat> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. Amen to that. The Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation. Tribulation means trouble, people. Who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings, which we also suffer. And whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Sounds like afflictions, suffering, and enduring is for salvation, doesn't it? That's kind of how I look at it when I read this. Verse 7. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, ye shall also be of the consolation. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. Can you imagine that, despairing even of your life? Wow. But we had the sentence of death. Perhaps you've heard of the death sentence. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, which raiseth the dead, who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also, helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many, on our behalf. For our rejoicing is this, 
the testimony of our conscience that in simplicity and godly sincerity, not with fleshly wisdom, but by the grace of God, we have had our conversation in the world and more abundantly to you word. For we write none other things unto you than what ye read or acknowledge. And I trust ye shall acknowledge even to the end. As also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Let's read that again. As also ye have acknowledged us in part that we are your rejoicing, even as ye also are ours in the day of the Lord Jesus. Is Jesus Lord? Absolutely. Right here it says the day of the Lord Jesus. You know, the thing is, if you go to any Baptist church, they're going to teach you that the day of the Lord and the day of Christ is two different things. It says right here, the day of the Lord Jesus. Is Jesus Lord? Yeah. Verse 15. And in this confidence, I was minded to come unto you before, that ye might have a second benefit, and to pass by you into Macedonia, and to come again, uh, to, and to come again out of Macedonia unto you, and of you to be brought on my way toward Judea. Macedonia is a province north of Greece. The, from what I understand, the Macedonians spoke Greek. I, as far as I'm concerned, the Macedonians were just, they were just Greeks that lived in a different territory. Alexander the Great was from Al Macedonia. And he conquered the entire Middle East prior to the Roman Empire. And the Lord, by allowing him to do such thing, Pave the way for that entire area to be able to speak Greek. Perhaps you've heard of the Septuagint, which was supposedly a Greek translation of the Old Testament. I've heard different things. I haven't investigated it thoroughly to be, have made up my mind one way or the other. But the uh, Septuagint was, like I say, it was supposed to be a Greek translation of the Hebrew Old Testament made for, I don't know, it was either for Alexander, I believe it was Alexander. Perhaps you've heard of the uh, great library at Alexandria. It's supposed to be the greatest library that ever existed. Of course, the Romans burned it down. Sometimes I've heard the Romans were great builders. I think the Romans were great destroyers, if anything. I don't know. All right. Um, and to pass by you into Macedonia, and to come again out of Macedonia unto you, and of you to be brought on my way toward Judea. When I therefore was thus minded, did I use lightness? Or the things that I purpose, do I purpose according to the flesh? that with me there should be yea, yea, and nay, nay. In other words, yes, yes, or no, no. Verse 18. But as God is true, our word toward you was not yea and nay. For the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who was preached among you by us, even by me and Silvanus and Timotheus, was not yea and nay, but in him was yea. For all the promises of God in him are yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God by us. Now he which establisheth us with you in Christ, and hath anointed us as God, who hath also sealed us, and given the earnest of the Spirit in our hearts. Moreover, I call God for a record upon my soul, that to spare you I come not as yet unto Corinth, not for that we have 
dominion over your faith, but are helpers of your joy, for by faith ye stand. And that's the end of 2 Corinthians chapter 1. And I don't see any commentary to this or Bible references, so all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.